action. It's not exciting. Um, but it can be. It can be exciting. So I just wanted to give you a flavor of that. And the reason I say it can be exciting is because while it's hard to sort of pull these videos off the shelf and just use them in a productive way, it is possible to create designed environments that use these videos in very exciting and interesting ways, which is why we're trying to create the teacher professional development resources that make use of these videos. <coughs> so with that flavor, we'll come back and look at some more videos. Um, I'd like to talk about the kind of uh, teacher professional development interventions that I am designing in my context. There are different um, uh, pieces of work, um, and this design work going on in, in different areas of the country. I'm designing particularly for a course that I teach repeatedly called How Online. And that's sort of the nickname for my course, Human Abilities in Learning. I've been teaching this for several years now, and I've always used quite a lot of video, and now I have this wonderful resource and in, in, um, incorporating video into this course, and I'd like to show you an example of some of the units. But before I do, I'd like to just describe the context in general. The content goals for the course, and the, and the people who take this course are primarily pre-service teachers, although we do <coughs> frequently enroll a couple of in-service teachers. And so it's very common to have a couple of in-service teachers working with the pre-service teachers, and they, um, it's very interesting because when I teach, uh, when I do a workshop, or I do a course for in-service teachers. Um, this, this course is academically rigorous. <coughs> and, I know, and the teachers that come together don't really want an academically rigorous course. But when one or two teachers come into this course, they get involved in this course in the same way that pre-service teachers and other undergraduates get involved. So it is a very academically rigorous course, but I think it's very interesting to uh, those involved. And, uh, so it's uh, uh, just a very special environment, I think. The content goals of our course are, can be summarized as we first focus on critical thinking and argument skills, partly because we expect people in the course to display good critical thinking and argument skills as they're analyzing and discussing the videos and working on the various units in the course. The, the sort of the main content of the course is cognitive and brain science for educators, and we have some wonderful materials that are very uh, teacher-friendly sort of representations. And uh, this is a, an area of great interest, particularly the brain research, great interest to uh, future and current teachers at this time. And they typically bring in quite a few misconceptions about what is going on in brain. Brain-based education, oh, that's really cool. And there's a lot of sort of funky stuff out there that's not so scientifically accurate or well-designed. So one of the, the great um, challenges is to bring these teachers so they can think about brain-based education from a scientific perspective and make judgments about what is good and what is not so good. Design of learning communities is the third um, topic we cover. And um, it's a particular approach to instruction that we advocate and that they learn about. We group people um, by their disciplines, and this actually changes from semester to semester. I control the admission to the course, and I create groups as I control the admission. And so um, these are the kinds of groupings that we might have. This semester, we have two education groups that are special ed and um, uh, primarily middle school and elementary school teachers or pre-service teachers. And these groups focus quite a lot on language and mathematics and science to some extent. Um, we don't have uh, any social science teachers this time, although there's a great deal of social science in the course. We do have a music and art group this time. We don't have a sports group this time, but I frequently do have a sports group. So we actually modify the content of the course, and the way we've designed the units allows us to do that, and I'll get to that in a minute. We modify the content of the course for, in terms of the disciplinary contexts in which the kinds of problems they receive might be presented. The course is organized into four instructional units. Um, the first one, critical thinking and argumentation skills from a cognitive perspective. 
Then we have a, a unit on children's thinking. This is uh, all grounded in the cognitive and brain science um, approach. A unit on lifelong learning that deals with older children and adults. And then they have a set of design projects. The kinds of learning and assessment activities we do in the course are actually the kinds of things we also teach teachers to do. We use quite a few internet tools uh, for these instructional approaches. But the uh, learning and assessment activities, in, and they're combined. A learning activity is often an assessment activity simultaneously. Uh, they do have assigned readings and, and videos that they have to watch. Many, many small group forums, and these are graded. They can't just go there and discuss. There are rules about the discussions and uh, what's expected. And there's a rubric for grading, and what they create online in these forum discussions is graded. They're assigned to small groups based on their discipline areas. And um, the small group forums are all centered around what we try to make authentic problem solving situations. So they may have to evaluate a brain based curriculum, for example. Is, is a good um, uh, activity that's going on right now in my class that I'm teaching this semester. All students write reflective blogs. So at each unit has, is about four weeks long and has four lessons. And after each unit, the student is responsible for creating a public blog that discusses the unit, what they've learned. And these blogs are graded. The grading isn't public. But there is a rubric that they have to follow. This is not just, oh, give us your opinion. This is give us your considered opinion, a good argument. How did you experience this unit? What did you learn? How did you relate it to your profession? And you have to do that in order to receive full credit. Quizzes are, are individual quizzes that are graded. These are, are uh, two-hour essay exams, actually. They're called quizzes because I use a, 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 um, a technology called Moodle, and Moodle calls them quizzes. But they're really small um, essay exams. Um, covering the each um, unit. And then there are these small group design projects that um, it's really the last quarter of the course. The students have to create a piece of instruction that actually does promote critical thinking and is justified on the basis of the content of the course. So I'm just telling you the context in which <coughs> these um, uh, video tools are being used. So I use a lot of internet tools. And I've actually worked with teachers in helping them develop um, these kinds of uses for their own classrooms. And one group I've worked with is the Wickety Group um, for, for the, uh, the Gifted uh, Students Program. I, I think uh, it's, it's wonderful for all students. It shouldn't be just for those identified as gifted. The tools I use, I use Moodle. And this is a tool that's available. How many of you are familiar with Moodle? Yeah, everyone. All right. Well, this is a tool that's pretty widely available um, to many teachers and in many school districts. I've always used a lot of video. Uh, I have a video collection. I've used YouTube. It's wonderful. Um, resources are uh, available on YouTube frequently. I use a wonderful site, TED.com. Have you heard of that site? You know, are you familiar with that? There's some uh, fantastic resources out there on the internet. And to these, we're adding our video mosaic collection. The Annenberg site has some, some marvelous videos. Uh, I use different kinds of asynchronous discussion forums. In Moodle, there are discussion tools available. They're all over. Many are available. You don't necessarily have to have Moodle in order to make this happen. Uh, we use synchronous chat primarily. That helps groups meet when they're doing their design project. I don't use synchronous chat a lot in my course. So we use asynchronous discussion forums primarily. Blogs, there are a lot of blogging facilities. Moodle has a blogging um, program. I don't particularly like it. I'm planning to move outside Moodle to, to use something called WordPress next semester. Um, wikis, are you familiar with wikis? <laughs> All right, the students use wikis. This is how they develop their design projects, working online, so they don't actually have to meet. So the students come together three times, once in the beginning, once at the end, and once in the middle. But most of their work is done online. So I'd like to show you um, the site. And there are two things I'd like to emphasize when I show you this. First, just to um, give you a sense of what we're doing and how we're incorporating the videos. But also the idea that 
it's sort of hard to look directly at this kind of site and tell what the instruction is about. So I'm going to move to this idea that this sharing of what we're doing